turn it off or move it or work around it in some way. And it classifies interferers in three groups, classified name, classified generic, and unclassified. The classified name is where the Cisco device can actually not only detect what type of device it is, but can actually give you the manufacturer's name. So for instance, it might be able to give you, hey, this is an access point, here's the brand name, and maybe even the model number. And examples would be microwave oven, Bluetooth. A classified generic would be when the Cisco Spectrum expert has got an, enough information that it can define the nature of the RF signal but cannot identify the device. For example, it might identify it as an FSK, which stands for Frequency Shift Keying Device. A Frequency Shift Keying Device would be potentially a cordless phone. Unclassified just means that it's capturing some RF but is not able to identify the type of interference or the device. So let's now switch over and look at the Cisco Spectrum Expert and take a look and see if it can identify my microwave oven and perhaps an unknown source of interference. So in this demonstration I'm using the Cisco Spectrum Expert and I'm in the Devices tab. So I'm in the devices mode of operation. And you can see here I have some Wi-Fi devices that are operating. I have Avil's network operating on channel 1, which has two SSIDs, both Avil's network and Guest. And then I have an ad hoc device operating on channel 1, which I'm going to use a little bit later on. Here's my neighbor's access point that's just arrived and he's some distance away so his signal's very weak so he's going to come in and out. Let's go take a look at my spectrum charts. I have four charts up, the ones we talked about, the real-time FFT, the FFT duty cycle, the power versus frequency plot, and the sweep spectrogram. And if we look at the sweep spectrogram, you can see that I've turned off all of my Wi-Fi devices except the one operating in channel 1, and so the spectrum is relatively clear. So what I'm going to do is go back to devices, and I'm going to turn on my microwave oven. And you can see it's reporting what its received signal strength is, and I'm about 25 feet away from the microwave oven, and you can see it's reporting a duty cycle of uh, 18%. Let's take a look at my spectrum chart. I put the microwave on for a minute, and so you're able to see the interference that's being caused in the 2.4 gigahertz band on the FFT duty cycle chart and if you go down to the sweep chart you can see the interference being caused and you can see here that the tool will actually reflect what's actually operating on that band. Now the microwave has just finished and so you should see those signals going away. There they go. You can now see that the spectrum is now clear. So you can imagine if I was in a cafeteria with 10 or 20 microwave ovens operating at the same time, it's going to be really hard for me to transmit anything if I'm trying to transmit on channel 6, because I would have a lot of interference. So let's go back to the devices view. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in a tool called Airhorn. And this is a tool that is used to test antennas. And what it was going to do is it's going to create noise in one of the frequency bands. And for this demonstration, I think we'll take a look at channel 36. So I'll press start. So this has now started to transmit, and you can see it's getting its duty cycle up to close to 100%. Let's move this out of the way so we can look at the Cisco Spectrum Expert. So you can see here that the Cisco Spectrum Expert has found a Wi-Fi invalid channel. Well, what does that mean? 
Well, let's click on that and say, what is this device? And what this device is, as it suggests here, is a security threat <laughs> because it's difficult to detect them. And so in this case, the Cisco Spectrum expert has been able to find it, but has not been able to identify what kind of device it is because it's not actually sending Mac messages. So there's nothing for it to read. And so is saying, this is a problem device. If I click on advanced, here you can start to see the channels that are affected, the bandwidth of the signal, etc. Click OK. Click OK. Let's go and take a look at my spectrum. Now this time I'm going to select the first tab and the only difference between the second tab and the first tab is I've got the same charts. However, over here in the control panel, you can see that I selected the frequency band and I'm transmitting the interference on channel 36. So I want to look at the frequency band from 5.15 to 5.35. So over here on the FFT duty cycle, you can see that this is causing almost 100% interference on channel 36. If I come over here, you can see I'm almost blocking out entirely that channel 36. And you can see the signal strength here indicating red and orange, meaning that if you were an access point operating in that band, you basically would not be transmitting. So let's go ahead and turn off this signal generator. Here it is. I'm now going to say pause. Move that out of the way so you can see what's happening. You can now start to see that the amount of noise that's now generated has been reduced. And so I've successfully turned off the interference source. So the main thing you should get from this demo is that the Cisco Spectrum Expert is able to identify various types of interference. Some of it will recognize, it will recognize the signal pattern, such as the microwave ovens, such as other Wi-Fi devices. But in the case of the airhorn device, it wasn't able to identify it but it was able to say there is a device operating in that band and it was able to show me the amount of interferences creating an impact on the duty cycle of those channels. So some key terms that you should be familiar with. The duty cycle. Cisco defined the duty cycle as the way of indicating how much the channel is being utilized or how much the bandwidth is being utilized. It measures duty cycles in two different ways. It looks at the percentage of time that the RS signal is 20 dB above the noise floor. And it looks at the percentage of time a transmission from a specific device is present in the channel or in the band. FFT, fast Fourier transformation. You've seen that being discussed when we looked at the spectrum plots earlier on. Fast Fourier transformation is a way of taking the received signal which arrives in the time domain and translating it to the frequency domain so that we can then look at the received power level across the frequency band. And we looked at it across the 2.4 gigahertz band. The Cisco Spectrum Expert would also enable you to look at it across the 5 gigahertz band as well. We also touched on the noise floor a couple of times through this lesson. And I want to make sure you know what the noise floor is. Noise floor is a summation of all the noise. And it could be electrical, mechanical noise, all sorts of things, and unwanted signals that are in that band, so the noise floor. Modes of operation is a term that's used specifically for the Cisco Spectrum Expert. It defines those five different tabs you saw on the top, where I have two that are spectrum, then I have devices, and the other two that we didn't talk about in this lesson were the channel summary and the device finder. A layer one sweep, and we saw that with the sweep spectrogram. 
A layer one sweep is literally a sweep across the RF environment. So we swept right across the 2.4 gigahertz band and on the 5 gigahertz band and took a look at what levels of signal strength that I was receiving in that band. So a layer one sweep. So let's talk about what we covered in this lesson. We started out talking about sources of interference, cordless phones, microwave ovens, Bluetooth devices. You even saw the impact of a solar system that was transmitting using a proprietary protocol in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And we talked about the impact of that interference on the wireless lands in terms of impacting your throughput. We then went on and took a look at the Cisco Spectrum Expert Tool. We then took a look at some real life spectrum plots and we took a look at the device view and how in the device view Cisco Spectrum Expert can identify different devices and how it was able to identify my access point and it named it as an access point. It identified my microwave oven but when it came to my other devices that I was transmitting in that band it wasn't able to identify them but we could see the interference level, we could hear the noise level, and we could see the impact on our ability to operate a wireless LAN in those channels.